Hello, and welcome to this pre-presentation on Involving Women in Jewelry Skill Development. Presented to you by Lillian Abu, owner of Acos Creative. African-inspired handmade jewelry and accessories, one of Melbourne's best ethical jewelry designers. Pre-recorded session I prepared earlier on for Mr. Asumenin and his team to uh, share with you in today's uh, vocational training session. Due to the time difference between Melbourne and Accra, I'm unable to present live. But I do hope that you do get a lot out of this session. If you happen to have questions, you can pass them on to Mr. Sumenin and I will be able to go through your questions, which Mr. Sumenin can share with you. Welcome everyone and thank you for staying tuned to this pre-recorded session. Jewelry is such a thriving industry in our world today. Jewelry is very easy to start up and perhaps you are one of those who are thinking of how you too can cash in in the thriving business of jewelry and fashion. If you're looking forward to get some tips and to find exactly where your niche is, then please come join me in today's video session and I will take you through some of the things that you can do to help you get started in the big thriving jewelry industry. Today I'm going to talk about involving women in jewelry skill development. Women play such a huge role in jewelry and fashion. Like I've already said, the fashion industry has thrived as a result of women entrepreneurs as well as the millions of women all around the world who adorn themselves in jewelry, like I do have. Now, today our focus is on handmade jewelry um, and how to make handmade jewelry and ways that women help to shape handmade jewelry industry. Before I go ahead, kindly subscribe to this channel and also put the notification button on so you will know when I upload my next video on how to make a living out of you know your passion on the subject of handmade jewelry development uh, what are some of the roles that women in this growing industry play so women can serve as merchants or suppliers or wholesalers in the fashion jewelry industry we have a lot of women who trade um, handmade jewelry supplies such as Krobo beads. Now usually I come down to Accra um, and I go uh, to Krobo Odumasi to buy my Krobo beads from the uh, wholesalers um, along the road. So this is um, a way that women play a role in jewelry making. They buy and retail beads and other jewelry findings and this is a very thriving business for women uh, most of the women make a living by trading these beads another way that women can play a role in the fashion jewelry industry is through modeling jewelry so just like myself um, you can be a model for a jewelry maker and people do pay others to model their jewelry. Jewelry artisans look for specific features in a person, whether the skin color, facial feature. Depending on what jewelry you make, you might want to, you know, get someone to model for you. And this is a very good way that some women help shape the handmade jewelry industry. We also do have manufacturers. Probably I should have started with manufacturers because without them, we don't have any jewelry making materials that we can use. So we have people, um, like I did mention, in Krobo Odumasi, who creates the Krobo beads. And this is their job. They go and collect the broken glasses, bring them together, crush them, and melt them in the clay mold to make the crobo beads, for instance. And I believe that if 
Ghana or other countries are able to manufacture their own jewelry making materials, that's a good way to make an income for the local people. Yet again, there are a lot of women out there who make beads um, and other jewelry findings. In fact, bead making is such a huge industry um, in other parts of the world like America, Australia, Canada, UK, where we have a lot of people from African descent who are still well connected to their culture. And beads are one of the most popular jewelry making items you can find today. And again, women themselves can be trained artisans and jewelry makers. Now, like I did mention earlier on, handmade jewelry is such a thriving industry and you will soon find out why. Handmade jewelry are one of the most easiest startups that women can make and be able to provide for their families. Almost every woman loves to wear a good jewelry and with today's trend, a lot of people are going for handcrafted uh, bracelets like I'm having or earrings. So this is a very great opportunity for women um, who might want to um, acquire skills and practice a trade. I think that craft making and jewelry making are one of the most profitable areas that um, women like yourselves will be able to you know cash in and make a living out of and again in the jewelry making industry we do have some people who neither trade in jewelry they are not manufacturers and they cannot create handmade uh, jewelry but what they can do is they can tell the difference between a good jewelry design and a bad one not that they are a bad jewelry but some jewelry might not um, meet international tastes. So we do have jewelry critiques, people who are able to, you know, forecast what will sell or what will trend in the coming fashion seasons. So some women with good eye for detail or good creative um, se good sense of creativity can become fashion jewelry critiques if I should call it like that women who can um, you know uh, make commentary about jewelry and help others to choose and pick the type of jewelries they want to wear now we can talk about social media influencers um, we can also talk about bloggers who go out there and, you know, talk about jewelry, make videos about jewelry, even including myself. I guess what I'm doing right now is critiquing jewelry and at the same time influencing others like yourself uh, to get into jewelry making. Women play other roles that I haven't mentioned and uh, you can tell us what other roles women can play in the big fashion and jewelry industry one of them is just being a support person to someone wanting to start their own jewelry business this is an informal support you can give to a friend uh, you can support them financially or just encourage them to get started some people all they need is some encouragement to help them start um, to discover their own niche within the jewelry industry now for everything there's bound to be challenges so what are some of the common challenges that women face when trying to scale up for a jewelry um a niche in the jewelry industry in every venture there's bound to be challenges what are some of the challenges in setting women up for jewelry skill development. One of the first challenges that most women face is financial. Now, it is quite difficult for some women to find uh, the financial incentive to be able to start their own um, jewelry making venture. 
This is why some places the government has provided incentives to help uh, women to start their own venture. Another challenge for women is not having the awareness of what is out there. So firstly, they might not know that there are financial incentives provided by the government, the local government or some kind of philanthropic agency. So they do not know um, that they can actually start something. So I guess lack of knowledge or lack of awareness of what is out there to help women start is one of the most significant barriers that prevent women from setting up in the jewelry skill development. Within the jewelry making industry, if you don't know what your own skills and interests are, you may have some untapped strengths, uh, you may have some interests within jewelry making, um, and you may not have thought about it. Because like most of us, when we talk about jewelry making industry, we see ourselves as, as the ones making the jewelry by hand. But like I've mentioned already, there are other niches. Uh, when I say niche, I mean other specialities within fashion jewelry. Either you make the jewelry or you critique the jewelry or you are an influencer or you are the manufacturer of some jewelry making materials or tools. Lastly, one of the major barriers that prevents women from being able to um, get set up in jewelry skill development um, is the lack of incentives at a community level. So where women live is where women would work. Um, some might travel, you know, um, some kilometers to work. But if within your area, uh, within the areas that you are able to travel to, there isn't any um, opportunities there. There are no space, so no workshops, um, no running programs, then you are unable to start anything. Which is why I think what Mr. Asuminin um, and his team have started is such a great initiative because it gives opportunity for the local people or the local women living in the area uh, to be able to start something. What prevents people from starting any kind of business is access to the practical needs. And part of the practical needs that women have is money, space, time, the resources, and of course the mentoring and the support that they might get from professional mentors or they are within their own friends or family network. For those of you who are watching this uh, recorded version of this video on YouTube, I will kindly ask you to subscribe and turn on the notification button so you can become aware of when I publish um, any new video. And thank you for joining me today. For those watching this session on YouTube, I ask you to kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel so you would become aware of when I upload my next video. So don't forget to put the notification button on. The next thing we're going to talk about are the simple steps to help women start a business in jewelry making. So if you join in today's session because you want to find out how am I going to get started? It seems like a huge task. Where am I going to start from? Then please continue watching. And also don't forget to write down your questions and pop them um, in the box so that I can read your questions and I will reply to your questions as soon. Simple steps in anything is the most important thing. When you want to start jewelry making, the best thing you can do is to start making simple steps. And one of the biggest steps you can make is by watching this video from start all the way to finish. The first step I would say tap into your own interest and find your niche um, in the jewelry industry. It is as simple as that. And 
it's you cannot go wrong if you find yourself doing something that you are passionate about ask yourself what makes you happy what things come naturally to you what things can you do without putting enormous pressure on yourself if you find what that thing is then perhaps that's your niche do you love beading do you love weaving do you like working with wire or like i mentioned before you just want to critique or influence other people to buy jewelry i can give you an example for myself um i discovered my creative sense at a very early age but i know that it's not everybody who feels that they are creative for some of you taking pen and paper might be a scary thing for you to do but like i mentioned you might be very good in managing money you might be very good in managing several tasks all at once so maybe you would probably manage someone's business or you would provide financial help to someone starting a business or you might handle their their sales and you know um make sure their shop their shop front looks good their display units um like i have so this is all someone's job to create all these other um set up and displays that people need that jewelry makers need to make their jewelry here is the truth many creative designers require accountants salespeople, or managers to help manage their jewelry making business jewelry makers themselves mostly do not have time uh, to do the behind the scenes tasks such as accounting and even sometimes displaying the jewelry front so if you're somebody who has a good sense of interior decoration you can help a jewelry maker decorate their jewelry front or you can make some of these displays um, as you can see behind me to help people display and sell their jewelry. There are so many other areas within jewelry making that people can make, make, make money out of. Like I mentioned, if you are a woodworker, if you are a welder and you are able to fabricate metal frames, you might want to get into creating jewelry displays to help other people present and sell their jewelry. You just joined us. Today we're talking about involving women in jewelry skill development. If you haven't yet done so, kindly subscribe to this channel and also put the notification button on so you know when I upload my next video. Now that we've identified some of the common challenges that women face when starting jewelry skills development, we can move on to talk about the simple steps to help women start their own business in jewelry making. Making simple steps in everything is a great concept um, and it's for those who want to start something small to those who want to start something big. It all begins with a one simple step. Now the first on my list is to tap into your own interest and to find your own unique niche within the rather huge jewelry making industry. Now, what I usually say is you can hardly go wrong if you start doing something that you truly enjoy. Primary and high school days, at school, the things we enjoyed, and I knew straight away that I love creativity. I love to make things with my hands and to draw and to sketch but that might not be you but the thing is the fact that you don't like drawing or you feel you're not good at it doesn't make mean that you cannot be successful making jewelry 
or playing any other kind of role within the huge jewelry making industry. A lot of creative designers require accountants, salespeople, or managers to help manage their business. Most jewelry makers don't have time to really go through every aspect of their sales and they actually need someone with experience to help manage their jewelry business. Like I mentioned, it all starts with brainstorming and going deep into yourself to find what really interests you. Is it making jewelry by hand? Is it critiquing other person's jewelry? Or maybe modeling jewelry. Or if you're good with numbers, like I mentioned, you could be an accountant. Or if you're well organized, you can help a very busy and successful jewelry maker, um, you know, organize their, their business and to make sure before tax time, they are able to put all their paperwork and their numbers together. If that is you, then you would have a good time, you know, working with a jewelry maker. Second step you can take in your jewelry making developments is to research. By research, I mean looking through social media to find out who the successful jewelry makers are. And in, in this session, I'm particularly focusing on handmade jewelry. So on social media, you can type in handmade jewelry and you can further refine your search uh, by location. So you might want to find some handmade jewelry makers or some people will type in sustainable jewelry because that's the current trend. Um, it's about sustainability, being kind to the environment whilst we create handmade jewelry. You can find a number of these jewelry makers on Instagram, Facebook, or the World Wide Web. A very good way to carry out research before you can decide which specific niche you want to get into is by visiting a local handmade jewelry maker. Now, many people are more than happy to have people come and you know look around but also be mindful that jewelry makers are artisans they they go through a lot of process to design and craft their jewelry and so they will be very protective of their design it all starts with a simple phone call and just introduce yourself and ask them if they would invite you to their shop. Maybe they wouldn't let you in where they actually manufacture or create their jewelry, but you might be able to sit down and have a chat with them and to find out how they started, what their challenges were or what their challenges are right now. They may also be able to give you some tips about how you can start your own jewelry making uh, venture. You might also be lucky for them to share with you who their wholesalers are, where they get their jewelry findings and other raw materials. Now, my third and final suggestion to you if you wish to start your own profitable jewelry making venture is simply start one why not for everything you can just well dip your toes into the deep waters you know so to speak um, and start your own jewelry making after all you've already done your research you've brainstormed to see where your interests lie you may have had a chance to speak to a jewelry making um, artisan or you may have attended one of the workshops, including watching one of my videos on how to start your own jewelry making business. So in my view, I think that is enough for, for you to have the information you need 
um, and be able to start something. You don't need to start something huge. Jewelry making is one of the industries that you can start with very minimal money. And friends to give genuine feedback on your jewelry is a very important thing. So make sure that the feedback you get about the jewelry you make are genuine to help you improve on your jewelry skills. Now before I conclude today's video, I encourage you once again to kindly subscribe to my channel and also have the notification button on so you get notified when I upload my next video. To end today's session, I would like to say when it comes to how women could participate in the hugely lucrative jewelry making business, uh, the options are endless. At another time, I will share with you more stories about the different ways you can actually start. But until then, what I want you to remember is women play such a unique role in handmade jewelry in this country and all over the world. A lot of people have ventured into thriving successful businesses by just starting to make jewelry by hand and it doesn't need a lot of set, set up income starting jewelry doesn't require a huge amount of money you can start on very little money and as you sell and you earn income you can further develop your jewelry business and many thanks to those individuals who are using their skills, uh, talents, money, and their motivation, as well as their space to support women start small businesses in jewelry. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I want you to start something big by starting small today. Ciao.